In association with Macklin's Gym, Marbella, we were in Wales today for the press conference. Leg two, should I say. Nathan Kevley versus Tony Bellew. Second leg. With me, two-time world title challenger, Tony Bellew. How are you doing, Tom? Yeah, he is. I'm all right, mate. It's lovely all this, isn't it? I mean, you know, you look around the roof, the ceiling, uh, the, sh the chandeliers. You know, if we could get them down like Del Boy and Rodney did, we'd get a few quid for them. <laughs> Not really, really nice chandeliers. So, you know, I think we should have a look at getting in the roof and, and getting them down. But besides that, mate, everything's gone well. I'm happy. You know, I don't want to talk about the chandeliers. I want to talk about, firstly, the reception you received from the Welsh people. Yeah. Probably a lot driven by the way Nathan was kind of uh, the reception he got in Liverpool. Mate, they love me here. I thought they were absolutely fantastic when I walked in. I thought they were. Ah, I think I had more fans than him in this room, to be honest. So, I thought they loved me. I enjoyed being here. Uh, it's, it's a lovely place, mate. So you know, I, I didn't feel any hostility. I mean, I had the fella off Little Britain in the front row, spitting a little bit of abuse. But you know what I mean? He looked like he, he could lose about three or four stone. And I told him I had a diet that could actually do it as well. So, I've done it. You know, proved, tried and tested diet. You know, he could lose three stone in the space of couple of months so I'm happy to give it to him as well so come off a little bit and I'll give you the fella. Speaking of diets how more how much more comfortable are you at Cruiserweight? Well James the proof is in the pudding as they say so uh, you're looking at me mate what do you think if you look at me now and look at me at light heavyweight uh, I think you see two different people to be honest I could show you the picture now. I remember you had very high cheekbones at light heavyweight you yeah. can see the gauntness in your face. Well I had I had a uh, I had, I think, at 12 stone, 12 pounds, with five pounds to go, I was 9% body fat at one stage. I have the, the picture on my phone, and uh, my phone. That's one that's my phone. I'll show you the picture that's on my phone, and the picture doesn't lie. Now, I'd like to show you this picture. Now, this is the difference between me at light heavyweight and a cruiserweight. And what I'd like to say is, if you look at this picture, tell me if you see a difference. And this is the only thing, right? Pictures don't lie. Men lie, women lie. There's two things that don't lie. Pictures and numbers. <coughs> Them two don't lie. So I'm just gonna find these couple of pictures and I'm gonna show you. I've located them. Let's have a look. So this is me at 9% body fat. I can't really 100% see it. Let me see if I can zoom. There we go. Can you see that? I can see that. Now that's me with five pounds left to lose. James, do I look like there's five pounds left to me on there to lose? You don't look like the same fella. But it doesn't, does it? So let's just get something straight. He ain't fighting that skeleton this time. He's fighting this guy this time. You'd ask me, him and him, two different people. I'm gonna show that on November the 22nd. That's the best way I could show it because looking at me there and looking at me now, two different people. Do you, do you think you've feel. retained your power from light heavyweight going into cruiserweight? I don't think I ever had any serious, serious power at light heavyweight, to be honest. And what serious power I did have was gone after four rounds, so... Mm. Simple as that, really. Mm. So I think cleverly has got a slight psychological advantage in the fact he's come to Liverpool already. And I know, just as you say, it was two different fighters, two different weights, but yep. mentally, does that give him a little advantage? Tell you what, mate, mentally, he looked like he fell apart today, to be honest. I mean, if that was a boxing match today, the referee would have stopped that after about six rounds, so... He's just lucky the boxing match on November the 22nd. He's got a lot of time to prepare himself mentally, physically. Like I said, you know, all as I've heard from him is I'm such a great athlete and I'm a true cruiserweight. So why the hell are you fighting super middleweights on your cruiserweight debut? That's all. And, and this is the question he can't answer. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, he's going to carry on continuing to tell himself he's this great athlete, this great cruiserweight. He's probably going to continue to tell himself he looks good in the club that he puts on as well, to be honest, but, you know, it is what it is, isn't it, mate? You know, we can all have a decent dress sense and uh, and speak rationally and speak factually. I speak factually, I speak facts. He, this guy is, is, is going round in circles with absolute nonsense, so. It is what it is, like yourself and Big Coogs has to say. Can you turn that camera on and have a look at Coogan? Coogan has become a celebrity. Scraping the barrel a bit there, isn't it? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, the Kung Fu Panda's getting pictures with him. Fantastic. I'm really happy for him. He's, he's, he's gone places in the world, mate. He's doing great. He's going up. I'm happy for him. He's going he's up. big time. Last question. Yo. Both of you have had two fights now at Cruiserweight. What distinction and what difference do you draw from your two opponents to Nathan's two opponents? What distinction do I draw? Well, I faced two proven, tried and tested career-long Cruiserweights. He faced a proven super middleweight 
we'd been knocked out by an, another super middleweight. And then in the second fight, he faced a guy who made me look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, you know, listen, Valori had just come out of the pizza, pizza up meat. The pizza hut or the kebab house, you pick which one. I prefer the kebab house, he prefers pizza hut, to be fair, so. There's no comparison between the two opponents. He said that himself, and uh, I'm just stating, I'm verifying what the big man has said. I know all fights are important to you in your career, Tony, but how, how does this one rank? In terms None more of so important than this, James. Simple as that. Listen, I could have fought for a world title in my next fight. I spoke to Calais and Nisei Sauerland at the Groves Rebrasse fight. Eddie's my man. I speak to Eddie. Would that be with Marco uh, Hook? I'll, I'll, to be honest, the, them guys are happy for me to fight either Juan Pablo Hernandez or Marco Hook. Mm. Simple as that. That's the Cuban based in Germany. That's the, that's the uh, yes, it is, it is. That's the Cuban based German. So it's uh, the Germany based Cuban, sorry. Uh, yes, that is a fight that we can go down, but I am told <laughs> upon Eddie seeing Hook for the first time in Germany the other day, Hook tells Eddie he wants Bellu and Bellu only. So we will see where that leads. I don't know, but for now, I tend not to get involved in that. I have a more of a personal matter, and that's the reason why this fight's happening. It's personal. I wanted it. He's got nowhere to go, so it's happening. Simple as that. How did this feud start, Tony? Break it down. The feud me. started me because he dresses like an absolute clown. He wears bandanas, and he's not Mexican. He comes to the ring to techno music that was out in about the 60s. Uh, I sometimes think is he from planet earth I don't know but uh, that's where the feud started that's where the the, 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 the the small dislike started I'd say that the dislike turned to hatred as soon as that after fight press conference was done it's always serious from there listen for people who are asking is this real I absolutely can't stand this fella from the sight of him I'm dealing with it because we've got cameras and microphones on if we didn't have cameras and microphones on there would be none of this parliamentary procedure crap and there would be none of this, let's control ourselves. It would just be on. There and then, it will be on. It's going down, Panda. <laughs> Listen, Tony, I can't thank you enough for giving me a bit Why of time. Why are you, man? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm cool. I'm all good. Panda involved. <coughs> I love Paul. Paul! <laughs> boss, boss, boss. What are you people that don't think he likes me? You fucking don't. I love Coogan. Coogan's a good guy. Coogan, Coogan's a legend. Okay. People are asking for pictures with Coogan. Coogan is cracked it. Coogan, how much you get for that picture? Coogan. Coogan, how much you get for that picture? Uh, as I say, the first ever time we covered a press conference was Ben Luke Cleverly at the O2 where the fight didn't happen. Him, trying to bust himself to make weight, <laughs> went up to him afterwards and he completely mugged us off. Do you remember, Helder? I remember. Completely I remember. mugged us off. Let, let how bad did you let, feel? Let me, let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just clarify all this right. apology, now listen to me apology, now it's not an apology I've lost 16 pounds listen to that that's the best ringtone you have ever heard Val I will get back to you as soon as this interview is over <laughs> now I swear to you the reason that interview happened that day I'd lost 16 pounds in 16 hours I was on a train to London I hadn't eaten for two days I'd lost 16 pounds and then some fella told me he's going to take me in a car park and do me in we both know the rest is history. I'm out the seat, let's box. Right now, no messing around, no promotion. Move Frank out the way, let's do it right now. If I lose 16 pound again and Coogan challenges me, Coogan's gonna be in a box in the ground. Never mind, let's an interview. Coogan's just going to just, Coogan's just going to sleep permanently. No messing, just straightness, just straight talk, real talk. That's how it was. I'm very sorry, I missed that interview. I do, I don't apologize, because circumstances, Put me in a position where I couldn't quite do it. But in retrospect, and looking back on it, shouldn't have lost 16 pounds in 16 hours. Shouldn't have got on the train in the first place. But I did. <coughs> do you know why? Because I'm driven. I'm, I just want it all the time. The thought of a fight, I fight in 16 hours, 16 months, 16 years, I'll still want to have a fight. Anyway, we don't hold it against you. No, I don't know if you all love Coogan. We love you, anyway. See that? At Coogan Cassius. At Coogan Cassius. Big pimping. <laughs> Big pimping. <laughs> Get that there off your shoulder, son. Tony Bell, you. Thank you for some of your time today. <sighs> Fights off. <laughs> Fights off. We'll see you again real soon. Thank you. Keep watching iPhone. <laughs>